Hello everyone, in this video we will be talking about the coagulation mixing studies. Mixing studies are specialized laboratory tests performed when there is a prolonged coagulation test like prothrombin time and partial thromboplastin time. The PT and APTT show the complex interplay of various factors of the coagulation cascade. A prolonged APTT indicates an abnormality in the intrinsic and common pathway, while a prolonged PT shows an abnormality in the extrinsic and common pathway. When either or both these tests are prolonged, performing the mixing studies can help identify the underlying cause. Mixing studies or tests, as the term implies, represents tests performed on a mixture of patient plasma and normal plasma. If the mixing corrects the test results, a factor deficiency would be suspected. Otherwise, failure to correct suggests an inhibitor interfering with one or more coagulation factors or the presence of a lupus anticoagulant. The primary purpose of mixing studies, therefore, is to distinguish between factor deficiencies and the presence of inhibitors in the coagulation process. Mixing studies may utilize different mixtures of patient and correction reagents. Generally, a 1 is to 1 or 50-50 equal volumes is applied. Correction reagents used are the following. Normal plasma or fresh plasma, aged plasma, aged serum, and adsorbed plasma. Usually, this normal plasma is a normal plasma pool that contains all the coagulation factors. This is comprised of the following. A minimum of 20 normal individuals, preferably equal ratio of male and female, to statistically yield a more than 80 units per deciliter of each coagulation factor. The platelet count should be low, with the resultant pool of less than 10 expansion 9 per liter. The absence of the lupus anticoagulant in the NPP should be documented, and the NPP can be frozen or lyophilized, but commercial sources should be stored according to manufacturer instructions. Aged plasma contains all coagulation factors except factors 5 and 8. These are labile factors that are easily destroyed as the plasma ages. Aged serum contains all coagulation factors except factors 1, 5, 8, 13, and 2. These are factors that are absent in serum because they were consumed during the clotting process. Factors 1, 5, 8, and 13 are categorized according to their property under the fibrinogen group. An adsorbed plasma contains all coagulation factors except factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. These factors are categorized under the prothrombin group and can be absorbed from the plasma when using barium sulfate or aluminum hydroxide. When performing mixing studies, the patient's plasma is mixed with a different control or correction reagents, and then the abnormal PT or APTT is retested on the mixed sample. If the cause of the prolonged PT or APTT is a factor deficiency or multiple factor deficiencies, the normal pooled plasma will increase the factor levels to the point of correcting the prolonged test result. However, the addition of normal pooled plasma will not correct the prolonged test result if the cause is a coagulation inhibitor. Let's give an example. Let's say a patient result has a prolonged APTT and a normal PT. This would suggest a coagulation factor deficiency in the intrinsic pathway, specifically factors 12, 11, 9, and 8. The extrinsic and common pathways are not considered since the PT is normal. After performing the mixing study, these are the test results. Fresh plasma can correct the abnormal APTT. Aged plasma did not correct. Aged serum did not correct, and the adsorbed plasma was corrected. Given that these are the deficient factors in each of the reagents, let's identify each coagulation factor responsible for the prolonged APTT. Since the addition of the fresh plasma, which contains all of the coagulation factors, was able to correct the APTT, that means that the coagulation factor in the fresh plasma was able to substitute the missing coagulation factor in the patient's serum. With this principle, another name given to the mixing studies is a substitution test. Going back to the results, to identify the missing coagulation factor from the patient's plasma, let's look at the others. The aged plasma did not correct the abnormal result, which means there is a coagulation factor that is missing in this reagent and was not able to substitute the missing coagulation factor in the patient plasma, 
therefore resulting in another prolonged APTT. We can now consider factors 5 and 8 are as the possible missing factors in the patient's plasma. Since factor 5 is not one of the intrinsic factors, we can cancel it from the list. That leaves factor 8 as the possible missing factor. Let's analyze the result from the aged serum. The addition of the aged serum did not correct the APTT of the patient. This suggests that the missing coagulation factor from the patient is also missing in the aged serum reagent. The missing coagulation factors in the reagent are factors 1, 5, 8, 13, and 2. Since we are only interested in the coagulation factors under the intrinsic pathway, we can cancel factors 1, 5, 13, and 2. That leaves coagulation factor 8. Let's proceed with the adsorbed plasma. This reagent does not contain factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. Let's cancel those not included in the intrinsic pathway, which leaves us with factor 9. Can factor 9 be considered as the missing coagulation factor in the patient's plasma? The answer is no, because even in the absence of coagulation 9 in the reagent, it was still able to correct the abnormal patient result, and that means it is not the missing factor in the patient's sample. Given these results, we can now say that coagulation factor 8 is the deficient factor in the patient's plasma, suggesting that the patient may have hemophilia A, which is a coagulation factor 8 deficiency disorder. Let's have another example. Patient coagulation test results are prolonged PTT and PT. This suggests a deficiency in the common pathway since both tests are abnormal. Given the mixing studies below, let's identify the coagulation factor deficiency. Fresh plasma, aged plasma, and aged serum were all able to correct the coagulation test while adsorbed plasma was not corrected. Let's first cancel all the coagulation factors not involved in the common pathway to trim down our choices. That leaves us with coagulation factors 1, 5, 2, and 10. Next, we cancel the factors where the reagent was able to correct or substitute the missing factor. That means factors 5, 1, and 2 are not the missing factors in the patient's plasma since aged plasma and aged serum corrected the tests. We now have coagulation factors 2 and 10 from the adsorbed plasma. We can cancel factor 2 since it was already canceled with aged serum. The last coagulation factor left is factor 10, and this is the deficient factor in the patient's plasma. For our last example, a patient's PT and PTT are both abnormal, and after the mixing study, fresh plasma was not able to correct the tests. Since the test remains elevated despite the addition of the correction reagent that contains all coagulation factors, this suggests that there is an inhibitor present in the sample responsible for the prolonged test and not a coagulation factor deficiency. Examples of these inhibitors are heparin, lupus anticoagulants, and specific factor inhibitors. In this case, there is no need to perform the other substitution tests. Mixing studies are usually performed as an immediate mixed test, meaning that the patient plasma is mixed with NPP and the test is performed immediately after. However, some inhibitors like factor VIII inhibitors and some lupus anticoagulants are time and temperature dependent. Their inhibitory effects are not immediately evident and only become fully expressed after some time and at temperatures higher than ambient room temperature. Thus, when immediate mixing tests are performed with such samples, the mixtures may show a false correction, since the inhibitors are not yet able to inhibit the factors from the NPP. Another mixing study would need to be performed with incubation at 37 degrees Celsius for 1 to 2 hours to fully express the inhibitor and to show a non-correction in the mixture. In summary, mixing studies can aid in the investigation of unexpectedly prolonged or abnormal patient coagulation tests and to help differentiate whether the abnormality reflects factor deficiencies versus inhibitors. That would be all for this mixing studies video. Thanks for listening. Until next time. Created using Powtoon.